One of the issues, obviously, in this trial is whether some government secrets are worth keeping, whether national security will be compromised if the secrets are not kept. Tonight, in the Unit 5 report, Carol takes us on a strange journey, exploring what may be one thread in this complicated Iran-Contra story. Ron, the story that we've come upon is a long way from Chicago, and it is very complicated. At the very least, it raises questions of whom the government chooses to do its work. At the very most, it raises new questions about the illegal supply of the Contras. For this story, we go 700 miles south to Mena, Arkansas. Mena is a town of patriots and pickups, a town of 5,000 in the mountains of western Arkansas, a place that would seem as far away from American foreign policy as a place could get, and yet, one little airport on the southern edge of town is managing to raise questions that extend far beyond the city limits. A thousand miles away from Mena, here in Washington, there are investigators for both the House and the Senate who would like to know what's going on at that little airport in western Arkansas. As Oliver North's public battle over government secrets and the illegal supply of weapons to the Nicaraguan Contras is waged in Washington, congressional investigators in recent months have tried to learn if Mena, Arkansas was an illegal staging area for shipping guns to the U.S.-backed Contra rebels. This is a strange story. The facts already known are bizarre enough. What Unit 5 has been able to learn makes this story stranger still. It all begins in 1982, when this man, Adler Berryman Seal, showed up in Mena, Arkansas. My top load paid me one and a half million dollars for a single trip. Barry Seal was a drug smuggler, an extraordinary multi-million dollar a year drug smuggler, who with the help of several associates kept and serviced his drug planes in a hangar at the Mena airport. Those planes, according to investigators, were illegally modified with extra fuel tanks and instruments in order to fly long-distance drug missions to Central and South America. Barry Seal paid his associates for those modifications with tens of thousands of dollars in cash, money which, according to investigators, was illegally laundered by Seal's associates at banks in Mina. Yeah, I'm pleading guilty. But when Barry Seal was finally caught in 1984, investigators for the FBI, the IRS, and other agencies of law enforcement were told little or nothing about a special deal he had made with the Federal Drug Task Force headed by then Vice President George Bush. The deal? The government kept Barry Seal out of jail, and in exchange, Seal became a drug informant and helped put in jail some of his own associates in the international drug trade. But that wasn't all that Barry Seal did. Russell Welch, criminal investigator for the Arkansas State Police. Did Barry Seal ever say to you, I work for the CIA? He said he was working, had worked for the CIA. Unit 5 has learned in the early 1980s, even before his arrest, Seal had bought one of his planes from a CIA front, Air America. The plane was used by Seal for drug smuggling, and the CIA company was paid in the traditional drug dealer fashion of $300,000 in cash. According to this confidential FBI teletype obtained by Unit 5, one of SEAL's associates said he was maintaining SEAL's aircraft at the MENA airport for the CIA. So what was Barry SEAL actually doing? One federal agent under a very uh, strict confidence told me that it was assumed within his agency Barry SEAL was uh, carrying guns to Central America in exchange, was bringing drugs back on a free ride. Russell Welch of the Arkansas State Police was one of dozens of investigators who for years had been tracking Barry Seal and his associates. As these documents obtained by Unit 5 indicate, the FBI, the IRS, Customs, and the Attorney General of Louisiana formed just a partial list of those who wanted some answers. They didn't get them. Internal FBI documents indicate investigators were told not to look into any of Seal's activities that occurred before his 1984 plea agreement. So, blocked from seeking indictments against SEAL, investigators sought indictments against SEAL's associates at the MENA airport for allegedly aiding in the drug smuggling and for alleged IRS violations. So far, no indictments have been produced. At the end of this year, the statute of limitations will run out on those alleged crimes. As for Barry SEAL, time ran out in 1986 when he was assassinated in Louisiana by Colombian drug dealers. Some of SEAL's secrets died with him, but some of those secrets today remain guarded by the National Security Council, the agency for which Oliver North worked. 
The NSC has blocked a recent congressional request to examine the relationship of drug smuggling to American foreign policy in Central America. As a citizen, America didn't get to stay in court. The mystery of Nina does not end here. If anything, it deepens. Tomorrow night, a Unit 5 report on the current and quite unusual activities at the Mina airport. Now, that trial, of course, raises the question of whether all government secrets are even worth keeping. Carol tonight continues her Unit 5 report on another arena in which some of these same questions are being raised. Ron, 700 miles from Chicago, 1,000 miles from Washington, questions are being raised about whether one small southern town connects to covert U.S. operations. Angola, where the United States has supported rebels against the Marxist government. South Africa, where the United States has walked a tightrope between the minority white government and the majority black population. Central America, where the United States has tried to overthrow the leftist government of Nicaragua and prop up the centrist government of El Salvador. Three critical areas for U.S. foreign policy that seem very distant from the concerns of a small community in western Arkansas, but maybe not. Mina, Arkansas is a small town in the mountains along the Arkansas-Oklahoma border. It has no interstate highway. It takes some effort to get here. But some people, some very interesting people in recent years, apparently made that effort. I don't think that there's really anything that we can pin down about them. I believe there's truth in every story. The rumors and gossip surround two small airfields. The first is the Mina Airport, where this giant C-130 military cargo plane, tail number N4469P, arrived one day last year. It is a huge plane for a small airport a plane that originally belonged to the Royal Australian Air Force. Curiously, around the same time, a group of Australians arrived to work at the airport, telling investigators like Russell Welch of the Arkansas State Police some strange things. You've spoken with some of the Australians at the airport, correct? Yes. And some of them have told you they're part of a CIA operation? Yes, it didn't seem to be too much of a secret. An Australian at that time told Welch the C-130 would soon be on its way to Angola, mission undisclosed. Unit 5 has learned of two current federal probes at the airport. U.S. Customs in Houston is investigating possible violations of the Neutrality Act, whether or not this plane, considered to be a weapon of war, might be on its way into the hands of South Africa. The second investigation by Arkansas Congressman Bill Alexander probes, among other things, whether or not the CIA within the past year and a half contracted with various partners to transport arms to Central America, allowing them to bring drugs back to MENA with distribution in Miami or New York. The mayor of MENA, Jerry Montgomery, doesn't believe any of it. That's hard for me to believe that, that MENA, Arkansas, was used. But there's more. Down a winding dirt road, back in the mountains where even the locals can get lost, resides yet another mystery. Now, this landing strip is a curious thing. It exists in an isolated mountain valley in the middle of nowhere when there already is an airport just 11 miles from here. So why was 2,700 feet of runway installed here? Why was this landing strip built? And what was it built for? One person who thinks he knows the answer is Gene Wheaton, a former criminal investigator for the U.S. Army who has done his own investigation. They were training pilots to make night flights and takeoffs and landings of strips that had no lighting, no air control, so forth. Wheaton's deposition came last year in an unsuccessful civil lawsuit against Oliver North and other principals in the Iran-Contra scandal. Oliver North won that battle and now in Washington fights the criminal charges against him. It is a fight over what government secrets should stay secret. In some ways, on a smaller scale, that's the same battle going on in Mena, Arkansas, where investigators from a variety of agencies for a number of years have asked questions of the government and have received few answers. The people of Mena themselves continue to debate whether or not their small town has some ongoing role in American foreign policy. I don't uh, see how it could have been kept a secret. There are definitely fishy things going on, and, and there's a lot of uh, cover-up. The footnote, that huge C-130 transport plane has been sold within the last two months to a new company.
But the new company has the same address, the same registered agent as the old one. That agent told Unit 5 the C-130 has not been flown in eight months, but that it will soon be on its way to a job in Liberia, Western Africa. He would not say what its mission was. Tomorrow night, Illinois Senator Paul Simon and Illinois Congressman Henry Hyde on whether all secrets are worth keeping. The North trial continues to raise the question of whether all government secrets are really worth keeping. Tonight, Carol concludes her Unit 5 report on national security and the public's right to know. Ron, the movers and shakers of this country are terribly divided on this question. Among them, two prominent national voices who hail from Illinois. Well, there are things that obviously have to be kept secret. But there is a strong tendency on the part of government to overclassify. I think the less secrecy, the better. But that's almost banal. There are things that have to be kept secret. But how many secrets should a government keep? This week, Unit 5 has reported on a small airfield in Arkansas, which was allegedly used as a staging area for shipping guns to the U.S.-backed Contras in Nicaragua. And we reported on a notorious international drug dealer whom investigators say worked for the CIA. Over the years, the CIA, headquartered here in McLean, Virginia, has been a synonym for secrecy. In recent years, the recurrent question has been whether the level of secrecy imposed was always necessary or proper, whether the public had a right to know more than the government chose to tell. The government secrecy has been very badly abused. David McMichael uh, is a former senior CIA analyst who believes too much government secrecy helped produce Oliver North. You set up a system such as we have, you know, it's not intended to produce Oliver North, but it will produce Oliver North. Again and oh, again. Sure. The John Birch Society was accused of finding a communist under every bed, but I find uh, there are some liberals who find a uh, CIA spook under every bed and in every closet. Congressman Henry Hyde is the ranking Republican on the House Intelligence Committee. Democrat Paul Simon is on the Judiciary Committee of the U.S. Senate. They disagree on how to protect America's secrets. At some point, uh, the public has to trust the bipartisan uh, structure of the committee. We're the oversight for Congress and for the public. I think it is unlikely that congressional oversight alone is going to do it. I think you need a strong executive to make very, very clear there are things you can't do and, and there are things you can do. Does Congressman Hyde believe there are more Oliver Norths inside the intelligence community? There are a lot of people willing to take risks for noble causes, and thank God they're there. Nothing as widespread as what Oliver North did is going on right now. Um, but I think we have to constantly be on the alert to make sure this, that we don't have repetitions. The Oliver North story is still unfolding. So, too, is the Unit 5 report on which we have embarked. There can be no simple conclusion to a discussion of national security and government policy. More reports may follow.